Focus on the breath. Experiment with the breath to see what kind of breathing is comfortable right now. Sometimes it's short breathing, sometimes it's long. Deep, shallow, heavy, light. It's often good to begin with some long, deep in and out breaths, just to emphasize the feeling of breathing in the body. And as long as long breathing feels good, you keep it up. If it starts feeling excessive, you can shorten it, make it more shallow. Adjust it until you find something that feels just right, and then hold on to that. Until it doesn't feel just right anymore, then you can change again. We're trying to sensitize ourselves to an area of awareness that all too often we ignore. We spend all our time paying attention outside. And this area inside here is something that just gets squeezed out, left behind. And the potentials that it has for giving us a sense of well-being don't get developed. So here's our chance to give it some time, give it some space. And if you really pay attention here, and you're consistent in your awareness of the breath, smooth in your awareness of the breath, the breath becomes smooth as well, it becomes more and more comfortable. And what starts out as just an ordinary feeling of being okay becomes more intense. And you can let that feeling spread throughout the body. Think of it going down the breath channels, down the back, out the legs, in the arms, in the hands, all around the face and the head, and the torso. Let these areas have some space. And be very careful not to squeeze them. When the breath comes in, it's not so much you're forcing air into a solid part of the body. You're you're allowing energy to flow into an energy field and out of an energy field. So it can flow naturally, easily. And that sense of ease gives rise to a sense of pleasure. This pleasure is not like ordinary sensory pleasures. Sensory pleasures are the pleasures that come into the eyes, ears, tongue, nose, tongue, body. And the body, it's the body touching things outside. That's the sensory pleasure that comes from the body. But the pleasure that comes from the breath is called a pleasure of form. And it's on a higher level. When the Buddha had been practicing austerities for six years and realized finally that that was not the way, he asked himself, is there another way that, to awakening? Could there be another way? He cast around and he suddenly remembered a time when he'd entered deep concentration as a child, spontaneously. And there was a sense of rapture, a sense of pleasure. And he asked himself, why am I afraid of that pleasure? And he realized there was nothing to be afraid of. It was blameless. It didn't require that he take anything away from anyone else. And it didn't intoxicate the mind the way sensory pleasures can. So I decided to explore further to see if this could be the path. And the more he got to know the path, the more he realized that this was the solution to his problem. When he gave his first sermon, he talked about how this path is a middle way between two extremes, indulgence and sensory pleasures on the one side, and self-torture on the other. Now, the fact this is a middle path doesn't mean that it's midway between pleasure and pain, kind of a, or a neutral feeling. It's a different kind of pleasure that gets you out of that continuum between sensory pleasure and pain. As you noted, the reason we go over sensory pleasures is because of pain. We're trying to escape pain, and we don't see any other escape. 
And so there are, are lots of drawbacks to these pleasures. They can get us to do very foolish and unskillful things. And they put us in a very precarious, unstable position, because all too often those pleasures depend on other people. And sometimes they give them, and sometimes they don't. Or else other people see that we have sensory pleasures, and they get jealous, and they want to take them away. And the mind begins to burn with sensual fever to get more. That just doesn't mean that all sensory pleasures are bad. As the Buddha said, there are some skillful sensory pleasures across the board, the pleasures of going out into wild nature, the pleasures of having the body healthy. The pleasures of living in a harmonious community. These things are good. But there are some sensory pleasures that are bad across the board. Any sensory, sensory pleasure that requires that you break the precepts or aggravates greed, aversion, and delusion in the mind, those are things you've got to avoid. And then there's a gray range in between, or certain pleasures. If some people enjoy them, they don't have any bad effect on their minds. But if other people indulge in them, they, they do develop a bad effect on their minds. So this is an area where you have to look at how your mind responds to a particular pleasure to decide whether it's something that you can continue enjoying or something you've got to learn how to let go. But most of us are caught in the back and forth between sensory pleasures and pain. And even when you see the drawbacks of sensory pleasures and you know that certain pleasures are unskillful, when there's enough pain, it can force you to go running for anything. Like the coyotes here around the, the monastery, when there are plenty of avocados, their fur is nice, they look fat. When the avocados have been picked and there's nothing much left, no persimmons, no, no food dropping out of the trees, then they'll just run around and eat anything. If you look at their scat, sometimes you find pieces of plastic rope in it. And when the pain of hunger is strong enough, people will do anything. And that's the danger of sensuality. And it's, However, as long as we don't have any alternative to sensual pleasures, that's what we're going to go for. As the Buddha said, even if you see their drawbacks, you're still going to go for them, unless you have an alternative. And the right concentration is what provides that alternative, this pleasure of form. So this is how it's a middle pleasure in the sense that it doesn't get caught in those two extremes, but it's not on a midpoint between pain, pleasure and pain. Actually, the pleasure of concentration can be very intense. It can saturate the body, permeate the body, permeate your awareness. And as long as you're mindful to keep the breath in mind, this pleasure is okay. The Buddha compares it to food. This is our nourishment on the path. Now, as with any food, you have to be careful about how you how you consume it. If you just gobble it down, even good food can cause you problems. In other words, you get here and the breath feels good, and you f begin to forget about the breath and you just go for the pleasure. And you end up in what's called delusion concentration, where the mind is still and it's pleasant, but you're not really clear about where you are. It's a half, half awake, half dreaming state. That's the case where you've been overwhelmed by the pleasure of the concentration. But as long as you have good manners in how you consume your food, otherwise you allow the pleasure to do its work in the body, its work in the mind. But you don't go dropping the breath, then you're fine. So this kind of pleasure is the heart of the middle way. So if you can learn how to give rise to it, learn how to maintain it, 
you're on the right path.